Thank you. It's beautiful, yes. Oh my goodness, yes, I love it. when you first moved to Boston, you had sworn off men. I'm here today to tell you that I'm the luckiest man alive because you broke your promise. 
At first glance in the elevator of Beacon Hill Athletic Club, I knew. I knew you were someone special in my life, I just didn't know how special. You've made me a better man, pushed boundaries alongside me, striving for the best for both of us. I never cease to be amazed by your drive, ambition, and intelligent wit. Through the years, we've faced obstacles, some greater than others, that have helped us build a strong foundation for our relationship. I know with all my being that this relationship, this nutty, zany, crazy relationship can stand the test of time and anything life throws at us. I vow to always make corny jokes even though you sometimes find them annoying. I promise to make you laugh when you're taking life too seriously. I promise to love you unconditionally. I vow to put you first and never lose our quirkiness. I promise you will always be my little green bean. I vow to always go get us food no matter what time it is. I vow to always try my hardest even though I may fall short. I vow to always be your patience when yours runs out. I promise to always get on the same level of upset even though I don't know what's going on sometimes. I vow to always be supportive of everything that isn't self-destructive or destructive to us. I vow to smother you with cuddles and kisses whenever you need them. And I vow to love you as much as I did when I first laid eyes on you until my last breath. I want your worst. Give me your bad hair days, your long commutes, your traffic jams, your bad eyebrow days, your lost phones in the couch days, splashed shoes, annoying coworkers, bad dreams, broken cookies, crocodile tears. Give me everything every day. And I vow I will give you my love and my everything until the end of time. Through work, Workouts, lost jobs, lost friends, new jobs, old friends, school, quarantine, and someday a family of our own, you will always be mine. Our journey as a family has only just begun, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for us. Ryan, I knew that we were meant to be when after a week of dating, you brought me an entire red velvet cake and a bag of chocolate and were unfazed when I finished both that same night. I love your ambition, your strength, your innate sense of what is good and right, and most importantly, your kind heart. I admire your positive outlook on life and your ability to find the silver lining. Not a day goes by that I am not in awe of your ability to selflessly put others' needs before your own. You put everyone around you at ease and make it your mission to ensure everyone is cared for. To say you bring out the best in me would be an understatement. You taught me to unbashedly say I love you and to tell others I care about them. You inspire me to be a better person and have shown me the power of patience, perspective, and positivity. Through the obstacles our relationship has endured, your unwavering patience, compassion, and genuine empathy has allowed us to grow and move forward. I not only look to you as my best friend and partner in life, but as the type of person I strive to be. If our future children embody even one of your qualities, we will be blessed. You are my rock, and at the risk of sounding cliche, you are simply the best person I know. I vow to support your endeavors, to help you accomplish what you set out to, and to hold your hand through hard times. I promise to grow alongside you, but to also never grow up. I promise to laugh with you every day, to dance with you in our kitchen, and try not to criticize your dance moves too much. I promise to accept that we are different people that see the world differently, and through the course of our marriage, we will want different things. While I do not expect this to be easy, I promise to keep an open mind about your unique perspective. Failing that, I will do my best to be tolerant. I promise to focus more on my own shortcomings and a lot less on yours. I promise to regard our relationship with honesty and care and to acknowledge the positive things you do instead of get hung up upon the negatives. I promise to always get food with you anytime, day or night, to give you the larger portion of food and to never say no to when you want to cook pasta. Most importantly, I vow to never stop being your number one supporter and the person you can rely on no matter what life throws our way. When I tell you that you are my favorite person, I mean it. You are my best friend and the person I want to binge how I met your mother with for the rest of our lives. I take you as you are now, tomorrow, and for eternity to come to be my husband. I love you so much. <laughs> the last part was supposed to be like, happy well, let's celebrate. <laughs>
drama, we should like run that way. <laughs> Make everybody freak out.
<laughs> Please be seated. Well, good evening, everybody. At uh, long last, after years in the planning, we're all here today to witness the marriage of Linda and Ryan. And uh, on behalf of the bride and groom, as well as myself, I want to welcome all of you. Thank you for coming, family, friends. And if anybody happens to be crashing, you're welcome as well. <laughs> Easy for me to say I didn't pay for any of this. My brother might feel differently. <laughs> and you're on your own dealing with him. Uh, <laughs> if there's anybody here I haven't been introduced to, I'm Jeff. I'm Linda's uncle. Uh, and I am uh, also a newly ordained minister <laughs> doing this for the first time. Uh, not going to lie, I'm a little nervous, but I think I got this. I got it. <laughs> um, Linda, Ryan, want to start with some personal words to the two of you. Um, starting with you, Ryan. Uh, I remember the first time I met you, uh, and I remember being struck by what a polite and respectful and intelligent young man you were, and I remember walking away thinking, this kid is completely fake. <laughs> let's, let's face it, who do you meet Ryan's age that really exudes all those qualities? And I gave him credit for being on his best behavior, but I was convinced there was another side that was going to come out eventually. Um, but as I got to know you and spend more time around you, I came to realize that that's just who you are. Um, then met your family. and. Uh, Realize all the more that you're good people because you come from good people. And uh, before you came into the picture, I think if somebody had asked me uh, to describe the ideal match for Linda, I, I don't think anything I would have come up with in my mind would have been a more perfect match than you. Thank you. Uh, proud to call you family, and I'm thrilled that our two families are being joined here today. Me too. Linda, I also remember the first time I met you. It didn't go the way I had imagined, but there was no part of it that felt fake at all. Your feelings toward me were all too real. Um, those of you who don't know the history, this kid wanted nothing to do with me for the first five years of her life. I might have one day thought that I'd be lucky to be invited to this wedding, let alone officiating it. Um, but you eventually warmed up to me, I think around your sixth birthday. I think so. The special outings. And, yes. Uh, and here we are today. And uh, I, was, I was really honored and really proud when you guys asked me to do this. And uh, over these last two years, all the phone conversations, the text messages we exchanged talking about the different elements of this ceremony and what you wanted to do, what you didn't want to do, even as the whole plan came together, right up until this week, there was one part of it that I was really struggling with. Uh, and that was trying to figure out how to put into words what it actually meant to me to be doing this here today. And uh, I got a little help just this week from Google. <laughs> I was, after all, ordained by the internet, so it seemed only fitting to get some assistance from the internet. But according to Google, I've been alive on this earth for 18,680 days as of today. If you're out there trying to do the math, I turned 51 in April. <laughs> but 51 years doesn't seem to have quite as much punch as 18,680 <laughs> And when this day is over, being here today and officiating your wedding will without a doubt have been the most meaningful and most memorable thing I have ever done in 18,680 years. <laughs> We're honored. Love you I picked out a couple of readings. I'm going to read the first one now. It 
It's really good. You want to hear it out loud? (laughs) 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 May your marriage bring you all the exquisite excitements of marriage should bring. And may life grant you also patience, tolerance, and understanding. May you always need one another, not so much to fill your emptiness as to help you to know your fullness. A mountain needs a valley to be complete. The valley does not make the mountain less but more. And the valley is more valley because it has a mountain towering over it. So let it be with the two of you. May you need one another, but not out of weakness. May you want one another, but not out of lack. May you entice one another, but not compel one another. May you succeed in all important ways with one another and not fail in the little graces. May you look for things to praise, often say I love you, and take no notice of small faults, even if one of you snores. (laughs) I added that part myself. (laughs) Tends to run in our family, Ryan. If you have quarrels that push you apart, (laughs) may both of you hope to have good sense enough to take the first step back. May you enter into the mystery, which is the awareness of one another's presence, no more physical than spiritual, warm and near when you are side by side, and warm and near when you are in separate rooms or even distant cities. May you have happiness, and may you find it in making one another happy. May you have love, and may you find it in loving one another. Amen. So folks, the way this works, when the minister says amen, you're all supposed to say it. (laughs) So let's do that again. Amen? Amen. Yes. (laughs) Large and in charge. So uh, we have uh, a hand fasting ceremony to do before the bride and groom give their vows. And um, there's a particular component of wedding ceremonies that when we were making our plans, um, Ryan, you were really clear to me that you're not a fan of this particular part. (laughs) I apologize, but it's in the handbook that I have to do. Oh, it's in the handbook, okay. But I'm going to ask you to trust me to handle this in a manner that I believe you will approve of. Okay. So, if there's anyone here today who for any reason objects to this union, please leave. (laughs) (laughs) If you were expecting me to say, Speak now or forever hold your peace, you can forget it. We've talked about this, we do not want to hear what you have to say. Your departure will say everything necessary. I don't know why people come to a wedding if they've got a problem with it. <laughs> Make room for crashers, they come to party with us. That's right. <laughs> Eric, would you bring forward the rings, please? When you're ready. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I have to acknowledge, um, I've played a lot of parts in weddings. I've been a ring bearer, an usher, a best man, a groom. Today I'm officiating a wedding. I've, I've been a guest at many weddings. I have never done what Eric is doing right now. <laughs> he, he plays a dual role of both best man and ring bearer, <laughs> and uh, I think that's worthy of a little applause. Let's hear it. <laughs> Room goes first. Place the ring on Linda's finger. Push. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So, I apologize to all of you if there's an awkward silence 
while I'm tying this knot, I deliberately did not prepare remarks for this part because I need to concentrate, make sure I get this knot correct. We have blush representing the bride. We have ash representing the groom. We have the white that represents the joining of the two. We have the microphone, which does not belong. <laughs> perfect when I practiced it, <laughs> but there was no microphone no. in the way at that time. Whoops. They say practice nice. makes perfect, <laughs> not every time. <laughs> tell you there would be an awkward silence. I wasn't <laughs> kidding. I'm going to get that right later. <laughs> <laughs> this reading is called Blessing of the Hands. These are the hands of your partner, young and strong and full of love, holding your hands as you promise to love each other today, tomorrow, and forever. These are the hands that will work alongside yours as you build your future. These are the hands that will hold you and comfort you in grief and uncertainty. These are the hands that will countless times wipe your tears from your eyes, tears of sorrow and joy. These are the hands that will hold your family as one. These are the hands that will give you strength. And these are the hands that even when wrinkled and aged will still be reaching for yours, still giving you the same unspoken tenderness with just a touch. Ready for your vows? It's yes, a big moment. Yes, I am. All right. Ryan, repeat after me. From this day onward, I choose you, Linda, to be my wife. From this day onward, I choose you, Linda, to be my wife. To live together and laugh together. To live together and laugh together. To work by your side and dream in your arms. To work by your side and dream in your arms. To fill your heart and feed your soul. To fill your heart and feed your soul. To always seek out the best in you. To always seek out the best in you. To play with you whenever I can as we grow old. To play with you whenever I can as we grow old. Always loving you with all my heart. Always loving you with all my heart. Until the end of our days forever. Until the end of our days forever. Linda, from this day onward, I choose you, Ryan, to be my husband. From this day onward, I choose you, Ryan, to be my husband. To live together and laugh together. To live together and laugh together. To work by your side and dream in your arms. To work by your side and dream in your arms. To fill your heart and feed your soul. To fill your heart and feed your soul. To always seek out the best in you. To always seek out the best in you. To play with you whenever I can as to, we grow old. To play with you whenever I can as we grow old. Always loving you with all my heart. Always loving you with all my heart. Until the end of our forever. Until the end of our forever. Ryan and Linda. May your marriage always bring glory to God, joy to one another, and blessings to your family for many generations to come. May love and laughter fill your hearts and your home for all the days of your lives. 
May you face every challenge hand in hand and side by side, knowing that with God's grace, you'll conquer all obstacles together. May the world be forever a better place because the two of you fell in love. Amen. 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 Ah. <laughs> and now, by the power vested in me, by the Universal Life Church <laughs> and the state of Maine, I do pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride, sir.
How about that first dance? So I'm Frank. I'm the father of the bride. Very proud. I want to start by acknowledging that nobody here lives in Ogunquit. <laughs> and so you all had to travel some distance, some only a couple hours away, some as far away as the other coast. And uh, I know these are crazy times, and so I just want to give a heartfelt thank you to everyone for making the trip here uh, to share in this day uh, with Linda and Ryan. I know that uh, my wife Jenna uh, and uh, Ryan's parents Mark and Sharon uh, also are very appreciative of, uh, of all the effort that went into coming here. I'd also like to take a moment to thank Beth our wedding planner, she's around someplace, probably solving some problem I don't know about, which is exactly what she should be doing. Uh, and uh, the staff from the Cliff House, in every vendor, the florists, uh, the hair and makeup people, the people who created the food, and like there's so many people to thank that I couldn't possibly get them all right. But for everyone who has worked to make this day and this venue as beautiful as it is, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so now let's 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 talk about let's talk about these two, like Linda and Ryan. The, you know, I I really didn't know where to begin with this speech. Um, so I thought I figured I would just start from the beginning. I remember the very first day that Lindra introduced Ryan to the family. And my brother alluded to this in, in the ceremony. Uh, it was Mother's Day 2015, and we were at a restaurant in Boston on the water, and Linda brings Ryan out to meet everybody. And here he comes, Mr. Big Muscular Ryan, you know, the big manly boyfriend. And... Uh, as Ryan is, he, he had flowers for my mother. He was the epitome of politeness and respect and good manners. And I thought, okay, this guy's good. Maybe, maybe a little too good. Maybe I should keep my eye on him and find his flaw. That was in 2015, for seven years, for seven years since 2015, I have been watching Ryan trying to find his weakness. <laughs> watching Ryan be attentive to Linda's every need. Watching Ryan be caring. Listening to Ryan call me Mr. Osier, no matter how many times I ask him to call me Frank. Just Ryan being Ryan. And I thought, when, when am I going to see this man's weakness? Nobody is this perfect. I'm not going to believe in Ryan until I see his weakness and know that he's real. And then after seven long years of waiting, last month, uh, we flew to Dallas for Linda's bridal shower. And while the ladies were off, doing whatever you do in a bridal shower. Uh, Ryan and myself and my stepson Teddy and uh, Nick, we went and we played 18 holes of golf. And it was like, it was finally revealed to me. Balls were flying in every direction. I'm like, he's not perfect. He can't play golf to save his life. I'm like, no, no. Ryan is real to me, I thought. I'm like, it's finally been revealed, his imperfection. Um, Ryan is real. He is, he is very real. In fact, he is the most real and good and wonderful man that any father could ever hope his daughter would have the, the good luck to marry. So, Ryan...
Now, let's talk about Linda. Now, I could tell stories about Linda all night long till the food went bad, but I won't. I'm only going to tell one story, one story, I promise. I'll let the best man in the maid of honor give the long speech. I remember when Linda was a little girl, uh, a scowling, curly-haired girl. And when I say scowling, I mean scowling. And uh, she was still little enough to jump up on my lap after dinner and watch TV with me or read a book or just babble as little girls do. And I know what you're all thinking right now. You're like, oh, this is going to be one of those mushy daddy's little girl stories. It is not. This is a warning. This is a warning about the dangers of plastic food. Linda had a set of toys that included a hard piece of plastic toast. And she would carry it around with her. And whenever whenever she would be on my lap watching TV and just being a sweet little girl, she'd have this piece of plastic toast with her. And at the end of the story, or the end of the TV show, or the end of our conversation, Linda would look up to me and she would go, Daddy, can I get a pony? And I would say, no, no, you don't need a pony. And then she would say, Daddy, can I give you a haircut? And before I would have a chance to answer, she would take the piece of plastic toast and she would start beating me in the head with it, (laughs) laughing hysterically. In Linda's youth, one of the few times that she smiled was when she was hitting me in the head with plastic toast. (laughs) And that tells you everything you need to know about Linda. (laughs) And for the record, I eventually bought the pony. Those days of ponies and plastic toast are, are just memories that make me smile and laugh now. And honestly, I wouldn't trade them for anything. Uh, I, I look back on those days very fondly. And, and that's, that's what I wish for Linda and Ryan today. Uh, to smile, to laugh, and to make memories. In those moments when you discover the new imperfections and flaws in each other, uh, remember that those are the things that make you real and unique as individuals and as a couple and laugh and smile and make a memory. When life is difficult, as it has been for many of us over the last few years, uh, when it feels like you're getting hit in the head with an errant golf ball or a hard piece of plastic toast, smile and laugh and make a good memory. And, And that's what we're all here to do today, is to celebrate Linda and Ryan and to make one of many really great memories for them to look back on and to smile and laugh. So, uh, so raise a glass and join me in wishing Linda and Ryan a life full of love and happiness, smiles and laughter and happy memories. To Linda and Ryan. Big round of applause for Mr. Osier. Definitely don't have this memorized. That's okay. (laughs) All right, so I want to start off by saying thank you for everyone for coming to gather for one of my absolute best friend's weddings today. So excited. So for those of you that don't know me, my name's Amy, also known as Toots. I've been friends with Linda since we were about five, six years old. It's over 20 years now, which is pretty impressive. We grew up riding horses together at Wild Air Farm. When we weren't at the farm, we'd spend weekends having sleepovers, which didn't include just bringing over bags of clothes, but bins and bins of horse toys. (laughs) We were those weird horse girls. Horse show weekends were a totally different story with their own set of rituals. We would wake up early to have Becky braid Linda's hair. She was the absolute only person that could do that correctly. We'd take off with Frank to the horse show where we'd meet up with Ike the Pony and it would only be a good day if Linda's number had a three in it. 
Uh, Linda, when Linda moved to Texas, I was absolutely devastated, but we remained close. Every Christmas, she would come home and we'd spend the holiday together. About the whole week after, because Linda's flight got delayed every single year. One day I got a call from Linda, went a little something like this. Hey Tuts, what's up? She's like, I'm moving home tomorrow. Like, oh shit, okay, what time am I picking you up? I couldn't be more excited to have my best friend back in the same state. Soon after she moved home, she got a job at the gym. She told me about this guy that she met. She's like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, give the guy a chance. What do you have to lose? Here we are today, everybody. Okay. Brian, you have chosen to be one of the kindest and most genuine people that I could have ever asked for to have my best friend marry. You challenge Linda to be a better person and can handle her like nothing I have ever seen before because let's be honest, Linda, you can be a bit of a handful. <laughs> I could stand up here and tell you guys hundreds of stories of Linda and I, but I will not do that. I'll pick one story that stands out to me describes their relationship fabulously. So one year, Linda and Ryan came down to Newport with my husband and I and a few friends. We decided to go to the parade and proceeded to get absolutely hammered. <laughs> After a long day of being down in Newport, surrounded by a ton of people, we went back to the hotel, decided pizza was the only thing that would help our stomachs. Ate pizza and Linda was like, okay, ready to go. We're going back downtown. She was not taking no for an answer. I'm like, Linda, it's been a long day. Nope, she was absolutely not taking no for an answer. Ryan pulled her aside, still don't know how you manage this, had a conversation with her, and without a fight, she came back out, and she was just like, yeah, all right, cool, makes sense, like, let's go to the pool. And at that moment, I was like, wow, I've never seen somebody be able to deal with Linda in such a way, like, <laughs> Like she didn't put up a fight, she was totally cool with it, and at that moment, it really clicked with me, and I was like, he knows her. He is so good for her, and I'm so happy that they are together. So guys, I love you. If we can raise a glass to Linda and Ryan, wish you guys a lifetime of happiness. I love you. Cheers. Hello everyone, good evening. Thank you all for coming and thank you Ryan and Linda for bringing us all here together. I'd like to take a moment as your twin, Ryan, to say how proud I am of you. You inspire me, you're my best friend. I'm so lucky to be a part of your wedding. Growing up, Ryan and I always had uh, our, our DMZ of different interests. You know, we had certain things we wanted to separate because we were twins, uh, so we didn't want everyone confusing us. We had to try to keep separate hobbies, separate toys, that sort of thing. Uh, Ryan was into sports and fitness, and I was into art and cooking. But Ryan has uh, crossed the line, crossed the DMZ into my interests when he discovered the perfect recipe for true love. Over time, Ryan and Linda found the ingredients. The first ingredient, and a tip to season as you go, is salt. To use your sweat and determination. Ten years ago, Ryan, you put a little post-it note above your bed that said, let's go, and you've kept that attitude all these years. <laughs> it's still there. And you, you both work so hard together to meet each day. And so you've kept that, the salt going. Now there's a couple more ingredients in this recipe. The second ingredient is spice. You gotta make it spicy. Uh, you use all your joy and your creativity, spice things up all the time. The stories of Leo, your cat, 
are, you always regale us with his misadventures, and it's so fun to see all of your creativity come to life. And Linda, all the planning that you've done uh, in this wedding is so evident uh, <laughs> for this weekend, even though the family from New Orleans wouldn't approve. Uh, I'm just gonna drop this, don't need that. Now, love is not a cold dish, it is served warm, so you have to add heat. You've both pushed your boundaries, uh, learning to dance as amazingly as you just did. Uh, you know, you've been keeping it, <laughs> keeping it hot. <laughs> the final ingredient in true love is spaghetti. <laughs> the night I met Linda, Ryan had me cook uh, pasta for the two of you, and I'm really honored that you trusted me not to ruin your date. Another time, when they were living in South Boston, uh, I, I asked what dinner you were cooking one night, and you said, oh, I'm doing a box of pasta. And I said, a whole box? That's four servings. That's for multiple people. And you said, no, you've got it wrong. We have a box each. <laughs> I guess all that starch early on ensured that you would stick together. <laughs> Well, I hope you continue to find romance in sharing and treating yourselves. Uh, the magic of all these ingredients coming together makes this and your love so special. Um, so, please, I'm, I hope you all will join me and raise a glass to a marriage full of love. Ladies and gentlemen, Linda and Ryan, the bride and groom. Cheers. Make some noise for Eric. All right, folks. Last but not least, I'd like to invite the bride's uncle, Jeff Osier, to the microphone to give a blessing. So I'm going to be very brief because I know we're all getting hungry and we want to enjoy this delicious meal ahead. And I'm telling you ahead of time that I'm going to be very brief so that you don't all miss your cue at the end, all right? <laughs> Lord God, we have gathered here around this dinner table to celebrate the love and commitment that have united Ryan and Linda in a wonderful bond of marriage. Bless our wonderful meal and bless the happy couple for a wonderful life together. Amen. Amen. Chase your dreams, but always know the road that'll lead. 
would you come again? Go on, take on this old world. To me, you know you'll always be. Don't be shy, everyone who's invited here and who's here today, come on in. Let's have some fun tonight, let's celebrate in the right.